and uh, thank you all for, for joining us here. You know, I'm the, I'm the new guy here at Nokia, and certainly the new guy here with uh, uh, the Q team, so I really want to thank uh, Sebastian and Lars and, and all the members of uh, the Q team for inviting, inviting me here. And for you folks uh, to, to join us here, you know, it's a big, it's a big deal for me to be back in uh, working with developers again. It's, it's, it's the best part of my job, and uh, I actually want to go into what my job entails. I think it is important, you know, even though it's been a couple of years, that uh, I give you some perspective uh, as as how what Qt means to a company like Nokia. You know, it's a massive company, extremely successful, and uh, you know when when you when you bring an organization like this one into a company like uh, Nokia, there's always that risk of it kind of dissolving into the corpus of the company. But I really do want to spend some time with you, giving you a perspective on how we view Q, what we are doing and what we plan to do. Uh, before I do that, though, a little bit about me. Uh, you know, again, I'm the new guy, uh, CTO of the company. It's really quite an honor. From a background perspective, um, it's, it's been a great ride for me. I've spent 20 years in the Silicon Valley working in a variety of uh, positions always in technology, always in software, sometimes on the business side, sometimes on the developer side. Wide range of stuff. I helped lead the invention of uh, J2EE. You might have uh, recognized that. I've also had the pleasure, and it's a little closer to home, of uh, leading the invention of J2ME. Um, also ran Solaris during the dot-com era. Uh, did a variety of things. I worked in some startups in uh, uh, systems management and networking. And, uh, you know, it's always been great to be in a position of inventing technology or working with the brilliant people who invent technology and be able to project that at a global scale. And that's what you know we can do here with Qt at Nokia, uh, but it's always been together with developers. So it's a, it's a great honor to continue this going forward. So a little bit about the CTO job, and I, and I, I, I mentioned this because I, I can't tell you how many times inside and outside of Nokia people come up to me and say, uh, so what the heck do CTOs do anyway? And, and you know, I, it's, it's a good question because every time I look out there for years and I've watched CTOs doing their thing, there's this enormous spectrum of, you know, the, the job and responsibilities of what a CTO does. And I, I, I characterize it as a, a, a very wide potential range. There are some who, you know, sit in the office and kind of just think about the future. It's so, such a wonderful thing. And, and then there are some who get more tactically involved in, in uh, building products, and certainly in Nokia, there's been a great opportunity for me to be kind of pulled along with the developer organization, with the technology and marketing organization, and, and kind of leading leading the gig in terms of the vision going forward. So, so what do I do? I, I kind of lead from a guidance and recommendation standpoint with product design, with user experience, a critically important thing going forward, uh, the technology strategy and vision, architectural oversight, um, and, and our overall process and, and guidance of how we build software, how we do releases. And I'll, I'll get to that in a, in a little bit because it bears a lot on the contract that we, uh, going forward, will be making with you to ensure that your investment in Qt technology will continue to uh, yield greater value. But ultimately, it's to provide the platforms and tools uh, to, for a global scale of developers so we can work together uh, to provide great experiences for our customers and yours. And, and I know it's not a, a, a one-way street here. You represent a wide variety of markets far beyond uh, mobile devices. You know, the, the desktop uh, is a peer device in the cute world to uh, the mobile space. But wherever we go, we work to make sure that we can do this together and provide value together. So I guess that's, um, that's kind of the job. Now, when I joined, uh, we had a lot of discussions at, at Nokia about, you know, what are really the pressing strategic issues out there? And, you know, you're gonna laugh because the great revelation, hardly a revelation, of course, is, you know, it, it's all about apps, right? It's, it doesn't take uh, a genius to realize that in the mobile phone space, in the smartphone space, the enormous change is to move from real embedded devices where the, the metric of Greatness is the experience and capability that you can provide from an embedded software perspective. It wasn't about apps, it wasn't about developers, it wasn't about APIs. And so the company over the last couple of years has been moving through this trend 
you know, obviously uh, underscored by the acquisition of uh, the Q the technology to ensure that uh, this is part of the program. But, but there are some subtleties that we are now engaged in inside the company to ensure that we really can deliver on the problem, uh, on, on the challenge of it's about apps. And, and th those challenges include things like multiple toolkits. You know, if, if we go out as a company and deliver devices or developer programs that says, here's a wide variety of things, why don't you go and choose? You know, infinite choice yields essentially nothing that can perpetuate in the market. We, we really have to narrow down our focus, and I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. It's also about uh, upward and forward compatibility to establish a contract, as I alluded to earlier, that says, if you write an app on our platform using the technology that you're very familiar with, um, we will guarantee that it will run on successive versions of the platform until such time as the device itself just can't can't physically support it. So it's an enormous change where uh, in the past we went from release to release where you know new work, new apps, new toolkits had to be built to really bearing down and focusing on one platform, the Qt platform, um, on our smartphone devices and ensuring that compatibility will, will, will reign as the most important capability in the program, that the tentacles of compatibility will reach into all of the things we do. And so as we, as we think about apps, it's, it's really much more than just the creation of apps. It's, it's moving forward into what that really means. So when we think about toolkits and frameworks and all that kind of stuff, there are some simple rules that apply to what we need to do to make sure that we both together enjoy a, a world in which we can build a, a great ecosystem for applications, for developers, and for devices. One is a, a large and homogeneous installed base, right? We have that with, with Qt. And what I just told you about is to ensure that we're going to continue that homogeneity uh, um, of, of our frameworks and platforms across devices as they evolve going forward. Great tools, well, we've seen some of them in the Qt platform, and, and Sebastian, uh, through his cold medicine, I think, just just uh, spoke about uh, evolving the tool platform to be stronger and better than ever. Uh, a simple and productive environment, we're gonna, we're gonna see a demonstration of that going forward, so that you know, for every line of code you write, there's great value, and great capability, and great sort of visceral uh, beauty in the applications that you construct, and a proven platform. You know, and so when we analyze what are the what are the key capabilities for our smartphone devices going forward, we chose Q. And this is not just a little marketing line. This is a very important thing. You know, I I, I want to make it very clear that going forward on all of Nokia's smartphone devices, the platform for building applications will be the Q platform. We are narrowing down all of our other uh, uh, platforms and frameworks and focusing solely on Qt as the way you will build apps on the Symbian and Migo platform. And this is an enormous change for a large company. And it's also a great opportunity for you, whether you came to Qt via desktop programming or via mobile device programming, you now see before you a, a, a large scale of devices that will all be yours from an ecosystem perspective. So this will bridge the world of Symbian and Migo because the very similar or, or uh, equivalent implementations will run on the Symbian and Migo device uh, range, right? It's gonna be a large and growing investment. We have put a lot of energy into the program, but this is going to continue to grow because we're betting the whole company in smartphone technology on, on Qt. And we're eating our own dog food. This is a very common term we, we used in previous jobs and it's really, um, you know, percolating throughout Nokia. We are dog fooding our, our life in which we ensure that we're building our own apps and our own platforms based on Qt itself. So we're not just asking you to do it. This is the platform that we are going to use for building all of our apps going forward. Uh, and, you know, making that transition is a complicated one. But I can assure you that there's uh, enormous energy inside of the company to uh, port or migrate uh, apps in other uh, frameworks to the uh, Qt and uh, QML platform going forward. So we're not going to be there tomorrow. It's going to take a little bit of work. But this is the global plan for the company. And you are here to go for that ride with us because we are backing it with everything we do. So a little bit more about the commitment to, uh, to Qt. Um, Sebastian uh, talked about it earlier, right? You know, in the past, 
I think there's been stresses in the system about adding new features versus just making this thing even more solid, right? Even more capable. And we certainly are well aware that we're going to continue to put energy into improved performance and stability. I think you'll see some things in a few minutes that uh, will impress you uh, actually throughout the day in terms of the kind of work uh, we have done so far and our commitment to you to continue to improve performance and stability in the platform. Open governance, you know, I come from a, an open source world, whether it's open sourcing uh, Java or being involved in a variety of open source activities. And so, we, you know, I think I can provide a good metric as to whether or not we're taking this seriously, whether we're opening up uh, to the community, where we're building a model and working through a model over time that will ensure that many committers, not just Nokia individuals, but many committers can join the community and we can together enhance the platform, not having to be gated by people at, at Nokia. So this is a, a big change and a very positive change. Those, those of you out there uh, will be able to join in very closely in the governance and evolution of the platform. Um, but that's kind of a good start. Uh, one of the things that's very obvious in the mobile world, and it's actually been true in the desktop world, but, it, but it's really very critical in the mobile world, is to provide you know, stunning experiences where you know, for every line of code you write, as I said earlier, you can create a, a, an amazing return. And so sort of the ROI of coding can be both uh, efficient and fabulous from the, from the standpoint and capabilities of the platform, which is why, in addition to Qt, we're, um, we're focusing our energy on Qt Quick and QML. And, you know, the, the naming is a little complex. I, I would say the best way to look at it is um, QML equals Qt Quick plus QML from a standpoint perspective. But um, however we, uh, you know, address the naming, this is a critical and growing part of the program. And I want to give you some idea of just how powerful uh, this can be from the standpoint of application efficiency and coding and visualization. So uh, what I'd like to do is bring somebody on stage, uh, Richard Collin, who is the Director of, um, of Advanced Development in our organization. Richard, why don't you join me on stage here? Come on, come on. Thank you. Thank you.